kids get to see many familiar faces from uh, young to, I'm not going to say old, but a little bit older. All the way at the back of the bus, we have uh, uh, my friend Joseph Zwillenberg, who just came from the IDF. He just finished serving, and he's on the bus with us. Everyone give him uh, a big hand. There you go. That's bus driver Eric. Eric, uh, I, I asked him previously, I hope you don't mind, we may have some bad thing to say about Iran or Obama. And he said, you picked the right bus driver because I hate Obama. I can't stand him. <laughs> There you go. Okay, uh, uh, right in front of uh, Joseph, from a little bit older, we have uh, uh, Chip Copley. Chip is not Jewish, but he wanted to make sure that he's with uh, Israel here to support us. Chip, I'm not going to say how, I, I mean, uh, uh, Chris, I'm not going to say how old you are, but, uh, but he's not as young as uh, the IDF soldier behind him. <laughs> Uh, Chris Copley. Big difference. Yeah. Chip is me. Uh, okay, so uh, as I said, we will have a few short speeches. Please pay attention because we'll be having some talking points that you can pick up. I'm sure you already know a lot about the deal, but there will, there will be a lot of media uh, that will be asking you questions. A lot of the media in New York will probably uh, slant more towards uh, the, uh, the other side. So it's always good to get in those uh, those few sound bites in there. Uh, okay, now let me let me let me touch on a few uh, short points on this deal. Uh, in my mind, and everyone knows this, this whole deal is pretty much predicated on the ironclad belief that we can fully trust Iran. Uh -huh. That's pretty mu that's pretty much what Obama based the deal on. Now, does anyone in this bus trust Iran? I didn't think so. I mean, I, I would sooner trust, the, to be honest, I would sooner trust Hamas than I would Iran. Hamas depends on Iran. Iran has always been the world uh, sponsor of terror. I have spoken to many people, as I'm sure you have, and I asked them, you know, told them about the deal. A lot of the naysayers have believed it. It's been more people uh, were in support of, uh, of the, of the uh, Operation Protective Edge back then. I'm surprised, and that's why I'm glad to see every single one of you here, because you would be surprised how many uh, people, especially your fellow Jews, are duped by this deal. A lot of people told me, you know, I, uh, you know, well, I haven't read the deal yet, so I can say, you know, those those people pretty much, uh, you know, are, 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 you know, at least they're being honest. But that's just a nice way of saying, yes, I support the deal. Then you've got the people who came out to me straight out and said, well, you know, I'm a dub. I'm a big supporter of Israel, but I'm a dub, and peace is peace, so I'd rather have this than not have anything at all. And, and then they said, oh, by the way, I haven't read the deal. Okay. Now, I have read the deal, all 159 pages, and I was dumbfounded, uh, as were not just the Israelis, but the Saudis, the Kuwaitis, the Emiratis, and everyone else that the, this idea of this nuclear deal, as if it isn't bad enough, I just want to read you a little gem from this deal that uh, Obama's been touting. It goes like this. This is from the actual agreement, word for word. It says, cooperation through training and workshops to strengthen Iran's ability to protect against and respond to nuclear security threats, including sabotage as well as to enable effective and sustainable nuclear security and physical protection systems okay now i don't know if you picked that up but sabotage i mean uh, you know that's right folks obama will protect iran against an israeli attack on iran's nuclear program uh you know if israel so decides that they have no choice pretty much this deal says that everyone in the deal has to protect iran Okay. Days. Now, is there still a question as to what Obama really feels towards Israel? Okay. Now, the other little nugget that I couldn't believe, the fact that they sat down without any preconditions. You know, I was dumbfounded by that. The fact that they, they didn't even have as a precondition releasing the four American hostages that are still uh, sitting in Iran, they didn't even discuss that. It wasn't even a, not it wasn't discussed, it wasn't even a precondition. 
the fact that they were negotiating on behalf of Israel and didn't even bother to get to ask Iran to agree that they will not call for the destruction of Israel, which we all know they do day in, day out, is also dumbfounded. Show me when Iran has stopped sponsoring terrorism. Show me when Iran has stopped screaming day in, day out, death to America and death to Israel. They haven't. They do it every day. It's, their, it's part of their uh, davening. Just like we uh, uh, pray and say amen, they say death to Israel, death to America. Okay? You can't trust a nation that consistently murders people, hangs people, kills uh, gays, and has in their charter, in their belief system, that they want to just uh, put Israel off the map. Now, in ending, we all know Obama keeps going out there and saying, look, I'm here to save Israel. He rode on on his little horse, the new sheriff in town, and he claims he's going to save Israel from the destruction of Iran. We all know that his delusions are a mark of Chamberlain, not a mark of Churchill. And all I have to say to that is we need more Churchills and not Chamberlains. I'm going to, I'm going to 